All right, guys, we are back at the top of the Furka Pass. In the last episode, we bombed down the east side, down a rail. Uh, this time, we are going down the famous west side, the James Bond descent, the Belvedere Hotel, the big Rhone Glacier. This is an iconic road, not just for cycling, but uh, movies, tourism, all of that. So, yeah, big one. As our first time going down, we did say we were going to do the uh, the side earlier in the morning. We came up and decided it was a little cold at like 8 o'clock in the morning. This is about 9.30 now. I'm leading Taylor out. He's got the helmet cam on. And Nina's getting some cool shots here. Of this gnarly looking rock wall behind us as we fly by. The stats, 15 and a half minutes, 7 and a half percent. Perfect. Uh, exactly 10 miles, 16 Ks, average speed 61 kilometers an hour, max speed 90 K an hour. So got some pretty high speed up on this one. And the average speed, it's a little lower than you might think, but that's because there's so many hairpins on this road. And you can see right up here, it's a bit flatter. We just starting to get into the real descent after the plateau on the peak. And you can see far off into the valley up here, you know, this, there's no bad part of this descent, even the slightly flatter bit's amazing, because you can see all the way down the Alps. And um, yeah, it wouldn't be a, a real descender if you weren't complaining about a little head breeze going on. If you see this black line on the road there, it's always hard to figure out when you're riding if it's water or if it's an old stain or if it's some kind of patchwork, but that was actually uh, water, I think. A big truck that we'll see later on went down ahead of us, probably leaking water so oh yeah, and I got a little bumpy I, I thought those uh, cutout squares were actually going to be smooth so yeah I'm trying to stay off this black line now because we're going through a corner and I really like the way I took this first corner um, stayed off the black line there yeah. edge to edge I set the set the tone for the rest of this descent the bike is sounding like a chainsaw I know it's uh, my big shame of this trip but it is running fine, and it held up great. It's just a drivetrain not set up perfectly. And here we are. This is the only part I was kind of worried about, not getting stuck behind traffic. We're coming up to the Belvedere Hotel. Very interesting uh, historic hotel that's now shut, but has an interesting history. And I'm coming in this corner way too hot, because there's a BM trying to pull out in front of us, and I'm like, nah, we, we're getting this guy behind us. But yes, it managed to scrub all the speed as I was cornering, and... Just go all the way to the edge, you know. People think we're about to crash under the edge, but I'm just using as much road as there is available, so it's actually safer that way than trying to pull it in tight while you're braking. And here is Taylor's getting a little bit gapped. This is the section here is probably about as far as we get apart from each other for the whole trip. And yeah, give him a break, guys, because uh, this bike is ridiculously fast that I'm on. Remember, I'm on the new Scott Foil. And Taylor's on a very good bike, the Scott Addict RC, but um, no match for the foil. The UCI relaxed the rules slightly with the tube shape and sizing, and Scott's one of the first, if not the first, to completely design a frame with these new standards in mind. And they did a lot of testing with people on the bike, not just the bike alone in the wind tunnel. And this thing is heinously fast. You should get a need a special license or something to to ride this thing it's so fast it's scary uh this trip not sponsored by scott i don't have to tell you about this bike but i'm genuinely super impressed about how ridiculously fast it is yeah this section of road is unreal it's a lot of bends but they're all open every now and then i'll look down on my computer screen just to see how tight the corners are i'm trying to stay in the super talk as much as possible and Taylor was having a hard time staying in the super tuck. I mean, that's how fast this new foil is. He's smaller than me. He's more aerodynamic than me. He's on a top end race bike and he's right in my draft here. And you'll see if he gets just a little offline from my draft or just breaks a little bit too much and gaps me by like a meter, which happens right now. That's it, he can't get back in, he can't pedal anymore, we're going 80k an hour. And you should be able to get back in on the draft, but you know, he's never had this problem before I got the foil, so... It was interesting testing it out here in Switzerland on these 
long super talk sections like it is a stupid fast bike and yeah i'd have no idea of captain at this point it's just all wind noise and i know he was on my wheel so i'm thinking he's still there a little couple of like bumps and stuff on this road nothing major but when you're going this fast on the top tube definitely want to dodge that so i take a look back there and i see him so i start braking nice and early and he's light so he can brake nice and late into these hairpins and we're all back on board here and yeah you can see the river the mountain you can see the Belvedere hotel like if you maybe you got a full screen this video to see it but it's right up there we just came from basically that peak right in front of us uh, and that's how fa far and fast you can travel in in the Swiss Alps you know we were there five minutes ago it's pretty insane to think that we cut that far that quickly um, we're just hitting a couple more hairpins here and we'll be down in the glitch and that's a really nice view of the of the Grimsel Pass and the couple buildings down there that's glitch where we'll be in a couple moments time and yeah here's the town of glitch we're coming into I guess this is kind of the main part of the descent the most iconic part of the Furka descent and then from here it goes down to Obergoms it's about the halfway point and this is actually where the Tour de Suisse came down for stage 9, the Queen stage in 2019. And we pipped those guys KOM time by 2 seconds there. Which was surprising to us because we didn't know what time we were going for or anything. We are just riding as fast as we feel safe to do. So yeah, that was cool to, to get on the leaderboard with no one else except Tour de Suisse times. So, so here's this truck I was talking about earlier. Uh, that I thought might have been spilling water. It's not spilling water now, but we gave that guy like 10 minutes. But yeah, big boy took his time getting down. And then it's starting to get a little more traffic -y here. I'm around this hairpin, just waiting for a good time to dart past this car. And then we all see this big bus. I think people are going to have a heart attack about this moment, kind of like that driver did. But basically, that car had to back up. They were at a complete stop. And Either the bus or the car had to back up, so I wasn't hanging around while they did their little dance. I just got it, got it moving through the gap once I knew it was secure. I was just checking in on Taylor there. He's all good behind me. That was the only thing I was worried about there was because I cut so much speed so quickly I didn't want him to run up my run up my butt, but he handled it fine. And then here we go. This clip here I put out the first clip of anything I put out for Switzerland, and this really took off and kind of set the tone again for what was coming out of out of this trip because yeah this is a, a high speed section very cool i think this is maybe the highest or not one of the highest speed sections of the whole trip and then i just saw these cobblestones in time because you do not want to be on the top tube going over them at 90k an hour yeah i thought we were going to hit like over 100k an hour for sure on this trip but it just didn't work out i don't know if we're on the wrong roads or we didn't have the right winds but uh we did just fine with 90k an hour um i put this clip out pretty recently on instagram just coming down there into the corner catching up to the car and then winding it up trying to stay in the slipstream yeah don't quite have enough speed to pass yet so i'm just getting closer and closer Right now I'm in the slipstream and I'm just waiting for a safe spot to get by. And here's a bend, slows down and I can see ahead so over we go passing another car. And keep the speed up and jump into a super tuck and never see that car again. But some people got really wound up about that which you know doesn't surprise me but it's a little strange. Um, you know you're going faster than a car, you pass it when it's safe to pass. Uh, kind of what happens to cyclists non-stop except we get passed with no metal shield around us but when you flip the script on people you know the internet gets upset which is a little bit ridiculous anyway that was the last um, pass of the descent and here we're coming into Obergoms another small town and descent done that was an awesome one like we had such good timing we waited out, waited out pretty well at the top, so we had a good run down. Zero cars on the first half into Glitch, and then a little traffic -y down below, but that makes sense because we're getting all the Grimsel Pass and the Furka Pass traffic join on this road. And yeah, celebrate as we yeah. win the imaginary stage after a two man descent breakaway. Oh, you're so fast on the Super Tuck. <laughs> Aero bike, 15 wheels. 
Gonna... Yeah, so Taylor is just trying to figure out why he can't keep up, even though he's kind of in my draft in the Super Tuck. Yeah, so the new foil frame set is, I don't think there's anything near as fast as it in the Pro Peloton right now. And then I've got the 60 millimeter wheels, which are also deeper than Taylor's. So he was having trouble just sitting in my draft in the Super Tuck, which I've never heard of before. That's insane. I uh, love the bike, love that descent. I'd love to go back and ride the whole thing instead of only the descents. But if I only get to do one of them, I'm picking the, the downward slope. So yeah, awesome day out. Thanks for following Taylor. Killed it on that film, just like all the other ones. I couldn't be happier. I'll see you guys on the Grimsel Pass for the next one. See ya. I'm telling you that bike is so fast. And then with your position in the, the Super Tuck, I have to be within like, eight inches to not, uh, it's fun to use her <laughs> pulling away.